Mr. Speaker, I'm taking this question on behalf of the Prime Minister. Members will agree that Singapore's politics must be for Singaporeans alone to decide. Worryingly, however, the internet and social media have created a new, vast and easy playing field for foreign interference. Among others, we have read about foreign interference in the politics of the United States, the UK, Ukraine, Australia, France, Germany, Netherlands and New Zealand. Clandestine and sophisticated tactics were used to fracture social cohesion and influence election outcomes through the spread of disinformation and half-truths and exploitation of sensitive issues. In the US, indictments by special counsel Robert Mueller lay out how a foreign hostile information campaign systematically and surreptitiously sought to influence the outcome of the 2016 presidential elections. More than two years before election day, a foreign organization had started infiltrating American society. They used fake social media accounts pretending to be real Americans and created social media groups on controversial issues likely to engage Americans. These accounts and groups gained influence over time, attracting thousands of real American followers. Social media posts by such fake foreign accounts even found their way into American mainstream media. The foreign actor was sophisticated in its approach. It had researched the fault lines in American society and politics and drove wedges along these lines. Its social media accounts spread falsehoods and false narratives on divisive social political issues such as race, LGBT rights, gun control and immigration. The foreign actor used bots and digital advertisements to amplify its outreach and viewpoints rapidly to give the impression that they were popular. This built a false sense of reality. Americans felt that their views and concerns were echoed by others without realizing that much of the support was artificially generated by fake accounts. Researchers <laughs> later found evidence that the foreign actor had targeted hotly contested states such as Wisconsin, Virginia, and Pennsylvania through Facebook advertising campaigns on divisive issues. For example, voters in Wisconsin saw more paid ads on gun and race issues because these issues held more sway with them. Those with household incomes of less than US 40,000 saw more paid ads on the issues of immigration and race. The campaigns riled up anger and fear and deepened divisions in society. The reach was huge. Over two years, about 126 million US Facebook users were exposed to content generated by this forward operation. Americans were also deceived to believe that they were part of spontaneous local movements when they were in fact being manipulated by a foreign actor. In one instance, the foreign organization cultivated two ideologically opposed Facebook accounts, fake Facebook accounts, the United Muslims of America and the Heart of Texas, and organized a protest and counter-protest at the same place and time to orchestrate discord on the streets. Real Americans in both camps turned up and demonstrated in opposition to each other. One man even brought a rifle. This hostile information campaign was not only to influence the outcome of the 2016 presidential elections, its longer-term objective was to undermine Americans' institutions and democracy. The campaign polarized and generated deep suspicion within American society and against its institutions. We saw a similar pattern of interference in the UK referendum on Brexit. Facebook falsehoods on social media, bots and fake accounts were similarly key tools of foreign interference. Grievances over immigration and a growing sense of disenfranchisement were exploited to turn the British people against the UK and EU <coughs> institutions and policies. A steady stream of anti-immigration falsehoods by foreign-linked social media accounts made people feel threatened and built a narrative of a British government that was failing to protect its citizens. There is also research suggesting that more than 150,000 foreign-linked accounts tweeted over 45,000 pro-Brexit messages in the last 48 hours of the campaign. The 2017 French presidential elections was also the subject of foreign interference. Just two days before the second round of voting, Nine gigabytes of data hacked from presidential candidate Emmanuel Macron's campaign were leaked online. In just three and a half hours, the leak was tweeted 47,000 times, with some suspicious Twitter accounts likely bots in action, posting more than 150 tweets per hour. In the Netherlands, a hostile information campaign sought to undermine support for an EU 
Ukraine trade agreement in 2016. The same year in Germany, a hostile information campaign built upon a fabricated story about a German girl being raped by Arab migrants stirred up anti-immigrant sentiments, sparked demonstrations and eroded public confidence in the German government's immigration and asylum policies. Perhaps the starkest lesson comes from Ukraine. At the hearings of the Select Committee on Deliberate Online Falsehoods, Ukrainian experts shared their country's experience. Disinformation about the Ukrainian government was spread through foreign media channels and social networks. It created the impetus for armed conflict and weakened the resolve of Ukrainians to fight. It eroded trust among Ukrainians in their public institutions. The experts highlighted their country's experience as a cautionary tale, a threat that countries ignore at their peril. Mr. Ruslan Denichenko, co-founder of StopFake.org, a Ukrainian organization that counters disinformation said, and I quote, you cannot ignore the existence of propaganda because Ukraine did it for years. And it might happen with any country that one day you can wake up and look in the window and see people with machine guns who kill each other because somebody on TV persuaded them that they should hate each other. Our experience, again, demonstrated that disinformation is a powerful weapon and it could be pointed to any country at any time very, very quickly. And he added, ignorance, uh, unfortunately, ignorance of this threat of foreign disinformation costs our country too much. We are also seeing other insidious forms of interference by foreign actors attempting to influence those involved in domestic political discourse through funding and donations. Ms. Ching raised specifically the example of Australia. In one instance, a senator resigned after it was revealed that he had received donations from a foreign political donor and advocated that foreign state's position on a sensitive issue, contradicting his own party's official position. The Australian government reacted, responded swiftly. Australia's parliament passed a package of laws in June 2018 aimed at preventing foreign interference in their politics. New Zealand has had similar concerns. An opposition leader allegedly circumvented political donation laws by disguising a donation made by a businessman linked to a foreign government so that it did not have to be declared. It has sparked debate within the country on the need to review policies against foreign interference. Indeed, today, information can easily be weaponized by foreign actors at a low cost with anonymity and impunity. No country is immune. This is asymmetric information warfare fought in a theatre and era with no distinction between war and peace. In this battlefield, Singapore, an open, democratic, digitally connected and diverse country, is especially vulnerable. We are a young country with sensitive fault lines that foreign actors can exploit to foment distrust and ill will among our various communities. They can easily deploy the same tactics, both clandestine and overt, that we have seen elsewhere to undermine our democratic processes and institutions and subvert our policies. Many of the countries I had mentioned have learned hard lessons and are taking action to expose and counter foreign interference. We are likewise developing a strategy on two fronts. First, we need to sensitize Singaporeans to the threat and nurture a discerning public. We are our own li first line of defense. We must learn to be skeptical of and be able to discern falsehoods or half-truths and detect foreign actors and their attempts to interfere in our politics. When they seek to create schisms in our society, we must stand together. Second, we must update and enhance our legal framework to counter hostile information campaigns, which is outmoded against modern and technologically sophisticated tactics. We must also take further measures to minimize the possibility of politically involved individuals and organizations being subverted by foreign actors. On hostile information campaigns, new legislation should have two broad objectives. We must be able to act swiftly and effectively to counter, to disrupt and counter false, misleading and inauthentic information and narratives spread by foreign actors. We must also be able to preemptively expose clandestine foreign interference campaigns. In the physical world, foreign actors may interfere in our domestic politics through the use of proxies by funding or donating to politically involved individuals and organizations, or by taking on key leadership roles in the organizations. Our laws must minimize the possibility of such entities being thus used and manipulated. We must not allow foreign actors to undermine our political sovereignty, 
nor our ability to make our own choices on how we want to govern our country and live our lives. The threat is real, and we will be moving on these issues later this year. Thank you.